Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kanan Morse, and I'm going to be reading a selection from Peach Blossom Paradise, uh, a novel by Chinese author Guo Fei, which I recently translated, um, and which was lucky enough to be shortlisted for the National Book Award. Uh, this is a novel about utopia, or the idea of utopia, and the inevitable reality of human narcissism, greed, and brutality that is always attendant upon utopian projects. Uh, it follows uh, a young girl named Xiu Mi, who is the daughter of a wealthy family at the end of the Qing Empire, as she is swept up in the currents of China's forgotten revolution and its af aftermath. That revolution was known as the Hundred Days Reform of 1898, it wasn't the Republican Revolution that eventually brought down the Qing Dynasty, but before that, a short-lived experiment by a group of intellectuals, including palace officials, who were hoping to turn China into one vast egalitarian paradise, essentially, overnight. Um, and in doing so, opened up space on the one hand for even more violence than was occurring at the time under the ravages of Western colonialism, but also for a lot of radical new envisionings of what a society should be like. And the people who maintain those visions often um, were willing to beg, borrow, steal, and manipulate however they saw fit in order to realize them. So I'm going to read from chapter two, in which Xiaomi has, uh, she's headed off, she's about to be married, she's had her marriage arranged by her mother. Uh, unfortunately, on the trip to her husband's house, uh, things very much go awry. So, chapter two. Once aboard her bridal palanquin, Xiaomi drifted in and out of sleep. The bridal procession moved very slowly through the morning's thick fog. The pitch and yaw of the river ferry and the grunts of the palanquin carriers repeatedly woke her up. Lifting the window blind revealed her new husband riding an emaciated donkey alongside her. He must have been grinning at her, though his features were indistinct. The matchmaker followed behind them, her smiling face powdered and rouged. A barely visible disk of pale yellow hung in the sky. The fog thickened gluing Xiaomi's hair to her head. She could see no more than a few feet away. The clanking of the donkey's bronze bell was the only sound that accompanied her. She thought of what mother had said to her the night before. When the bridal palanquin arrives tomorrow morning, just leave with them. You don't have to say goodbye to me. And make sure not to drink any water before you go so you're not too uncomfortable on the journey. Now, according to custom, a new bride returns to her parents three days after the wedding. But Changzhou is a long way away, and with all the trouble that's happening, you shouldn't try to come home. Her pursed lips trembled as she held back tears. Xiaomi had seen Magpie and Lilypad crouched by the courtyard wall, crying as she walked to the palanquin that morning. Baoshan and Tiger had also been with them, but they did not look at her. Only Hua Erniang and Grandma Meng made a fuss over Xiaomi, stumping around on their bound feet and shouting orders. Ding Shuzhe had sent a servant around a few days prior with a handwritten couplet for the doorway, the word for happiness, written in 16 different calligraphic styles. That morning he had stood by the village entrance, scratching his back with a wooden scepter as he watched the procession go by. To Xiaomi, he had been little more than a shadow against the impenetrable fog. A new anxiety overwhelmed her. She suddenly had a feeling she would never see Mother again. When the palanquin lifted, her heart floated off its moorings. The fog separated her from Pu Ji almost immediately. She worried about more than just Mother. The golden cicada in the embroidered box was still locked in her dresser upstairs. Three years had passed, and the six-fingered man Zhang Ji Yuan had spoken of had yet to appear. Soon after they crossed the river, Xiaomi's dreaming was interrupted by a commotion outside of the palanquin. She figured that residents from the village nearby must have discovered the wedding procession and come to cheer them on in hopes of catching some wedding candy. The thought didn't interest Xiaomi at all, and so she continued to doze. 
It seems strange that the clash of metal blades and a woman's screaming should suddenly pierce the general hubbub, but Xiaomi didn't pay much attention to it. Yet the palanquin began to pick up speed until it became clear that they were moving at a full gallop. The rush of wind and the bearer's heavy panting filled her ears, and the palanquin jostled so violently she nearly vomited. She finally drew the window blind to discover that the red-cheeked mashmaker, her dowry train, and her ostensible husband and his donkey with the bell had all disappeared. All that was left of the procession was the four palanquin barriers, who now carried her as fast as they could along a rocky path. One of the bearers in the front turned to face her and yelled breathlessly, Bandits! It's bandits! Motherfucking bandits! Xiaomi heard the sound of horse hooves behind them and realized the severity of her predicament. Eventually, exhaustion overtook the four men carrying her. They dropped her on an outdoor threshing floor and ran for their lives. She watched them jump away and scamper across the wheat field, then vanish in the fog. Emerging from the palanquin, she found herself alone. One ramshackle hut stood unused at one end of the threshing area, its walls tilting precariously, the thatch of its roof already black with mold. A water buffalo lay asleep by the front door, while some white egrets perched across its back and along the hut's roof. A dark shadow in the fog signified a grove of trees, from which emerged the cry of a cuckoo. Xiaomi watched a handful of men on horseback converge on her from several directions. Yet she didn't feel the slightest bit afraid. These highwaymen, infamous for being green-skinned and sharp-toothed monsters, looked a lot like ordinary farmers. One of them, a middle-aged man with a bald head, sauntered up to Xiaomi on a white horse and smiled as he reined in his mount. Xiao Xiao, do you remember me? The question shocked her. How could this man know my nickname? She scrutinized him for a moment. He did look familiar, particularly the long scar across his face, but she couldn't remember where she'd seen him before. I don't know you, she said. What about me, then? The question came from another one, a twenty-something young man riding a chestnut horse. He was broad-shouldered and muscular, with a resonant voice. Do you know me? Xiaomi shook her head. The two men looked at each other, then burst out laughing. Well, that's no surprise. After what, seven or eight years? asked the middle-aged man. A full six years, replied the younger man. How come it feels like seven to me? Nope, six years. Exactly six. As the two riders argued, a young man who looked like a stable boy walked over. Boss, the fog's breaking up. The middle-aged rider looked up at the sky and nodded, then turned back to Xiaomi. You'll have to forgive us for this. Before she could reply, a band of black cloth dropped over her eyes, while a salty wad of the same material was forced into her mouth. The men bound her hands securely and threw her back into the palanquin. Then they lifted the palanquin and continued on their way. 